Hello and welcome to my channel where we make gourmet tasting cakes using a box mix. And today we'll be using not just one box mix, but two, because we are making a red velvet cheesecake cake. So stick around while we make something boxed, but better. We are going to start by lining two 8 inch round cake pans with a 9 inch round piece of parchment paper. Fold the overlapping pieces down on top of each other until they lay mostly flat, then set to the side for the cheesecake. In a bowl add one 8 ounce block of room temperature cream cheese, two large eggs, one and a half tablespoons of vanilla extract, and one package of no-bake cheesecake mix. Yes, we are going to bake a no-bake cheesecake. I know how ridiculous that sounds, but trust me, it's going to taste amazing. Mix this all together until it becomes well incorporated. It looks almost like sugar cookie dough. Once you're done with that, we can add one and a half cups of half and half. Mix this for about three minutes or until your batter becomes completely creamy. And as always, be sure to scrape down the sides of your bowl. And in this case, make sure you scrape the bottom as well to make sure that everything gets fully incorporated. You'll notice that your cheesecake mixture is becoming thickened and smooth. Pour your cheesecake mixture into the two 8 inch cake pans that you have lined with the parchment paper and smooth it out evenly on top with your spatula. Now we are going to bake them at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. It has been 25 minutes and our cheesecakes are done. Checking to see if a cheesecake is done is much more different than checking to see if a cake is done. A cheesecake still needs to be jiggly, and when you touch it very lightly with your finger, it will not come off to the touch. This is how you know it's done, even though it's jiggly. Leave the cheesecakes in the pans and cool them in the refrigerator completely. In a large bowl, add one chocolate box mix, three large eggs, a half cup of full fat sour cream, one tablespoon of vinegar, trust me, add the vinegar, two tablespoons of liquid red dye, and one and one quarter cups of buttermilk. Mix this for about two minutes until it is well incorporated. If you do not have liquid red dye, you can also use gel red dye, but the amount you will need will be different depending on the shade of red you would like. Pour this evenly into three 8 inch round pans that have been greased and floured. You'll notice this batter is very thick and fluffy. It will make for an excellent red velvet cake. Smooth it out to the edges of your pan with your spatula. And now it is time to bake these beauties at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. It has been 25 minutes and our cakes are done. There are two ways to check to make sure it is done. The first is the poke test. Poke lightly with your finger, and if it does not leave an indent, it is done. The other one is the toothpick test. Insert a toothpick, and if it comes out clean, you know your cake is done. Now we will let our cakes cool before adding the cheesecake layers. For our cream cheese icing, we need one 8 ounce block of room temperature cream cheese, one stick of unsalted butter, also room temperature, one tablespoon of vanilla extract, and one pound of powdered sugar. Then add one tablespoon of milk and you are good to go. Let's mix it up all nice and beautiful. Don't forget to scrape down the edges of your bowl to make sure everything is fully incorporated. Once you are done, cover your icing with plastic wrap and set to the side. These cake layers need a little bit of help getting out of the pan. So once they have fully cooled, go around the edges with your butter knife and gently pull away from the sides of the pan. Put a small dollop of cream cheese icing on your red velvet layer, and doing the side to side motion with your butter knife, spread it out nice and thin. We don't want it to be too thick because the next thing will be the cheesecake layer. This is simply acting like the edible glue to hold it in place. Grabbing the edges of the parchment paper, pull your cheesecake out from the pan. If you have a springform pan, you can also use that. But since I know most people do not, I'm trying to show an alternative way to do it. Gently pull the parchment paper from the sides of the cheesecake. It's not going to look pretty, but don't worry, this will be in the middle and nobody will notice. But it will taste absolutely amazing. Flip your cheesecake layer on top of your red velvet cake and peel the parchment paper back. Now it is time to repeat the same process with the next layer. Once you have finished assembling your layers, take a bread knife and gently carve down the edges of the cake. 
You don't want to go too far in, we are just trying to take off enough so that the edges are completely straight all the way down. This will make for a more professional look when you ice your cake. If you need a little help, you can always stick your cake in the freezer for about 10 minutes. This will make it stiffer and a lot easier to cut for beginners. Before we ice our cake, we are going to give it a crumb coat. Put about half a cup of icing into a separate bowl. Use this for your crumb coat. That way, if you have any crumbs stick to your knife, you don't accidentally get them back into your main bowl of icing. You can always add more icing to your crumb coat bowl if you need it. Spread a thin amount of cream cheese icing on your red velvet cake. The purpose of a crumb coat is to catch the crumbs. We will be adding a final layer after we finish the crumb coat, so it doesn't have to look perfect. Once you have finished your crumb coat, put your cake in the refrigerator or the freezer for about 10 to 20 minutes to let the icing completely firm up. This will help make that final layer of icing a lot easier to do. I know I've said it before, but I'll say it again for anybody that is new to this channel. When working with soft icings, the best technique is to put a large dollop of icing on the top of your cake and then slowly push it to the edges with your butter knife or decorator spatula until it begins to fall over the side. When it does, catch it and begin to smooth it along the sides. This is a lot easier than trying to balance a large dollop of icing on your spatula or butter knife. Remember to hold your decorating tool at a 45 degree angle to help push the icing along the cake. If you hold it flat against the cake, it will begin to drag the icing and this will cause it to rip up the cake underneath. We definitely don't want this to happen, especially when working with such a beautiful creamy color against a very brilliant red. You will see the crumbs very easily. Worst case scenario, if you do get some crumbs showing through, just cover your cake in red sugar sprinkles. No one will ever know. After you finish icing your cake, you can take your spatula or butter knife and using the flat side, go all the way around the cake one time just to help smooth out the edges, and then gently go over the top doing the same motion. Once you have finished icing your cake, place it again in the refrigerator or freezer for about 10 minutes to help the icing firm up for the decorating process. Cream cheese icing is very soft, too soft to use for most decorating techniques. So if you're going to use cream cheese icing to decorate, add some extra powdered sugar to it to make it stiffer. In a separate bowl, put a small scoop of icing and add one tablespoon of powdered sugar at a time and stir it in until you reach the consistency you need. Three tablespoons of powdered sugar to about one third cup of icing will give you a very good consistency for using to decorate. Also, temperature does have a big impact on cream cheese icing. If your kitchen is cold, it will be stiffer. If your kitchen is warm, it will be softer. So adjust accordingly as needed. If you decide to color your icings, I highly recommend using a gel food coloring. Liquid dyes will make your icing thin and consequently difficult to decorate with, especially red dye since you usually need a lot of red dye to get a true red color. I filled two piping bags with one color of green and one color of red. For the red, I am cutting straight across to make a small hole in the bag. For the green, I cut a V shape into the bag. Think of it as the shape of a bird's beak. They sell icing tips that are shaped like this. This is just a way where you don't have to buy one if you don't want to. I am using one third cup of graham cracker crumbs that was included in the No Bake Cheesecake box mix, along with some liquid red dye to give it a fun red color. I'm using the red graham cracker crumbs to go around the bottom of my cake to give it a beautiful pop of color at the base. I am using the red icing to make what I can only describe as a fancy C on top of the cake. Start on the inside, swirl out, and then come back in, swirling in again. I am making some holly leaves with the green. I am holding the bag up and down as if it were a bird beak mouth, and squeezing until the icing builds up, and then pushing in a little and pulling out a second time to give it more of a holly leaf texture. I'm not gonna lie, I was feeling a bit off my game today, and then I realized, oh yes, I just totally blew through lunch without eating. That's probably why my hands feel so shaky. But I also told myself that whoever gets this cake is still going to love it no matter how it looks because A, it is delicious, and B, it is a free cake since I give away my cakes when I'm done recording each episode. For the holly berries, I am squeezing my bag straight up and down, building up into a little ball, and then I stop squeezing before pulling away.
Since this cake has such a special center, I thought you would like to see what it looked like, so I decided to show you a picture of what my test cake looked like after I cut it. And there you have it, our red velvet cheesecake cake. Thank you for joining me. I had a lot of fun and I hope you did too. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comment section below and I will do my best to answer them. And I will see you next time on Boxed But Better with Jenna. Ah! Whoops. Well, there's your blooper. <laughs> Thank you for joining me. I had a lot of fun as usual and I hope you did. That's stupid. Okay. Stop judging me. I just am struggling today. Oh, that's cool. I mean, you've only done this like a hundred times. I know. How, uh, mm -hmm.